Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. It is The Savage Nation. You can kill the music now if you don't mind before I go deaf with these headphones. Once again, thanks to Comcast, I am in a radio station, no longer in a home studio in Florida. And thanks to WFTL Radio in West Palm Beach, Florida, I am speaking to my loyal audience. Today on The Savage Nation, we're going to try to have a Trump-free day. You heard me, a Trump-free day. Because if you said God as often as you've said Trump over these last few weeks and months... You'd be assured passage to heaven itself, if not sainthood. Think about how many times you've said the word Trump over the last few weeks and months. Now, don't get me wrong. I have nothing against him, but enough is enough. I once gave a show, and I said, we're going to have an Obama free day, remember, when every minute was Obama, 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 like he was the sun, the moon, and the stars. So that's the story. We'll have a Trump free day. So what do you want to talk about? Bingo, Trump. Uh, the first call. As a matter of fact, Donald Trump was on my show last night, and he said on this show that ISIS is going to get worse than waterboarding when I brought it up. Well, boy, did that set off a shock. Mexican president compared Trump to Hitler and Mussolini. Look who's talking. CNN's, uh, to me, he's like a Matahari, like a double agent, Zachariah with the crazy eyes. You know Zachariah on CNN? Does anyone know him? Raise your hand. With the bug eyes? The resident uh, front man for... Uh, care it looks like to me in my opinion well anyway the bug eye on cnn zachariah likens trump's rise in the gop to the rise of islamic extremism well what i say is you know i've studied homeopathy like cures like mr zachariah and the only way we're going to defeat your friends in uh that world of islamic extremism if they are your friends in fact that i wouldn't know the only way to defeat them is like cures like we need an extremist to defeat them or we're dead. We are dead in the water unless we defeat them. And let me tell you something. There's only one thing those vermin understand, and that's worse behavior than their own, which kind of leads me to a couple of questions. Can you imagine life? Let's say it's Trump versus Hillary, which is what it's starting to look like. And let's say they don't stop him, the Romneys and the other country club Republicans who hate outsiders, who despise independence. Let's say they can't stop him and he becomes the nominee. And let's say it's him versus Hillary. And let's say she wins because she, whatever she wins, just to say she wins. Let's not go through it. Despite the email scandal, the Clinton Crime Foundation, despite the history that she has in the White House, despite all that because of the idiocy of the American people, and she wins. Would you imagine with me for a minute, three years after a Hillary presidency, what this country would be like? What would, would this country look like after three years of a Hillary presidency? You have to imagine the world after three years. And I think you have to turn to a university today to understand what's liable to happen. The, the fascism, the unconstitutional fascism on colleges today is what America itself will look like if she wins, in my opinion. Well, she's certainly better than Bernie Sanders, the communist. We understand that. But if you look at what's going on in the universities today, that's what America would look like. So, you know, if you want to talk about that, the phone number is 855 472 But there's a bigger topic other than the political itself, and that is the issue of truth. Uh, I was speaking with some people before the show today about truth. And so where do people turn for the truth today? You ask a politician a question, you don't get an answer. You get a, a, a waffle, right? So I said, well, don't turn to politicians for the truth. They're only politicians. What can you expect from them? So who do you turn to? Oh, your priest? You're going to turn to your priest for the truth? Tell me about the church today. Tell me about the synagogue today. 
Who do you turn to for truth? People don't know who to turn to for the truth. So I will ask you, my audience, who do you turn to for the truth? Where do you go for the truth? Now, many of you listen to talk radio because you think you're hearing the truth, and you are. I know in my own case, I tell you what I think is happening. I try to express certain things in my personal life. But honestly, you can't expect that we're gods. None of us are gods. We're all people. We're, we're all flawed. You know that. We're not better than the average person. We're just talk show hosts. It's like the old statement of the rich are different than you and I. They have money. Well, talk show hosts are different than you and I. They just have a microphone. But we're just people is what I'm saying to you. But in an age of such chaos and confusion and lies flying around, where do you, the audience, turn for truth? All right, it's an interesting question. I don't know whether I'm going to get any response. You're probably going to call about Trump no matter what I ask you. No matter what I say, I'm going to get a call about Trump. So, you know, go for it. It's 855-400-SAVAGE, uh, 855-400-7282. I see no one called on that. Very nice. Yesterday I tried the story about Scalia. Was he murdered? With the evidence put out, nothing, not a call on it. All we got was Trump. So no matter what I try, I'm going to ask you again about truth because it's all about truth. Where do you turn for truth? Many of you are jaded, you're cynical, you're depressed, you don't know where to turn. You don't know what to believe. Everything is a lie. Look at Fox News. Look what they've, look what they've turned into. Last night, they do a softball town I love the word town hall. Don't you love town hall? 18 stooges that they pick. They hand pick six Schmendricks and a moron to sit in the audience. And they have a town hall meeting with Brett Bear, who I used to respect, by the way. I have no respect for him anymore. He's become a water boy for whoever runs the network. So they have a softball town hall meeting last night with between Hillary Clinton and the communist Sanders, who practically foamed on himself with the, the amount of whatever. And that one question was really a challenge to either of them. Instead, everything was a softball aimed at Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. This is the same network where they use the vicious Katie Kelly, whatever her name is, Caitlin Kelly, I don't know her name. Katie Kelly, I think, is her name. The roller derby queen. Megan, Megan, Megan Kelly, the roller derby queen whose face is changing before our eyes, the portrait of Doriana Kelly. Uh, on a daily basis. Where do you go for the truth? I'm serious about this question. But before you call, before I take your calls at 855-407-282, we're taking two topics for now, just as an out-of-the-box starter. Imagine life three years after a Hillary presidency has been in power. What would the country be like on all of the essential issues, immigration? What would life be like in America with no wire hangers in office? Guns. Tell me about your guns. Tell me about the First Amendment. Tell me about talk radio. Tell me about the Internet. Tell me about family life. Tell me what life would be like three years after this woman is in the uh, Oval Office, if that what would happen, if that's what would to happen. And I think the other question, which is catching a little wave here, which is where do you turn for the truth is something people do want to talk about, because in essence, I think people are looking for truth. So let's begin with the first caller. Gary on WJR in Detroit, Michigan. Gary, you're first up. Go ahead, please. Hey, Doctor. Yeah, I turned to, believe it or not, talk radio, not just because of the uh, the guests and the actual hosts, but because of the opinions that you hear from all over the country, hundreds of different men with different opinions. And you have to sift through it, of course, to weed out the nonsense. But you find the truth in there. It is in there. All right, so you, you tune into talk radio for the truth, not from the talker per se, but for the conversations that permit you to derive from all the conversation what you think is the truth. That's correct, right. All right in essence, what you're saying is you need dialogue and you need to listen in in order to come to your own conclusions. It reminds me of a story I've told many times on the show. I grew up in an immigrant household. My father was an immigrant, but he was very interested in, in current affairs. He used to get, I remember, five, six newspapers a night. And I once said to him, Dad, you've got the New York Post, the New York Daily News, the Journal American, the this, the that. I said, what do you need all these newspapers for? He said, I like to read all different sides so I can make up my own mind. Isn't that what you're saying? Oh, sure. And that's what uh, Plato did, too. So, Yeah, but I don't take a lot of different opinions. I'm short-tempered. I don't suffer fools gladly. 
So I don't know that you're going to get a lot of different sides of the of the coin here on this show. That that definitely is the truth. <laughs> See, I've just given you a truth. Is that that's the truth? Is I don't know that you're going to get the truth listening to talk radio. It would be very nice of me to say yes. We're the truth sayers, and it's a terrific thing to do. And and thank you. And I'm sending you a bouquet of flowers. But I'm not so sure you can rely upon what you hear on talk radio for the truth either. So it leads us back to the first question: Where do you turn for the truth? Lie on it. But I th I thank you for the call. You've given me your opinion. That opens up 14 lines. At 855-407-282. No, we have a number of calls. People like this topic. Remember what I, you know, I said, talk radio for the thinking person. Because people do like to think for themselves. And there's only so much BS they can take from television where they really don't feel they're getting the, the on it. All right, look, people listen to talk radio and they watch television. And they read a newspaper. And they talk to their friends. And then they think, uh, 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 you know, come up to the uh, to the truth and the uh, arrive at the truth. The, the whole concept of truth is an interesting question itself because it's being challenged by the leftists in America right now. They are saying through the deconstructionist theory, which was written by Foucault and others, I don't need to go into the philosophy of it, that there is no truth, that everything is relative. That, that's why they want to rewrite history. They want to tell you that you have white privilege if you're white. That's even if you're born poor, dirt poor, no advantages in life. Your parents could have been destitute. They'll tell you you had white privilege just because you weren't uh, of another race. Now, you know that's a lie. But this is the kind of garbage that we're going to have to be putting up with if Hillary wins, in my opinion, which leads us back to another question. What will the country be like in three years if Hillary wins? Now, that is the opening to the Savage Nation. The phone number here is... 855-400-SAVAGE. That's 855-400-7282. We'll have music, poetry, art, science, philosophy, but most importantly, an attempt to arrive at the truth and all of the latest news right here on The Savage Nation. I love my country, is all I can tell you. You know, I hear music like this, it makes me feel more American than you can imagine. It is the, it's the voice of America. Play it. It's, it's only Metallica. And the song is only about truth. Now, we're talking about truth today. You can turn off the music on the Savage Nation. We're talking about truth. Why? Take a look at what's going on in the whole process now. One calls the other a liar. So who's the bigger liar and who's telling the truth? I don't know. We're taking a gamble. Then you got on the other side, I mean, Hillary Clinton's running on a truth campaign. We didn't have eight years of her and Bill running America off the rails. And then we got the communist uh, from the soapboxes of Union Square, Bernie Sanders reinventing himself. Oh, but I'm a, I'm a Democrat socialist. Now suddenly he's Jewish. And the first three months he says, I'm a non-practicing Jew. I don't know what a non-practicing Jew is. If God made you Jewish, you're a Jew. What do you mean non-practicing? Now all of a sudden he discovers he's not only a, a non-practicing Jew, he's a real Jew because he realized in the campaign he needs to be a real religious person. It's unbelievable. So we, we look around. Who do we believe? Where do you turn for the truth, ladies and gentlemen? And does the truth matter? Aha, there's the rub. Does it really matter what the truth is? You look back on the 60s generation, the whole hippie generation, and they wanted to blow their minds with every drug, known and unknown. Every designer drug that came along, people took. And those people are running the world today, whether you know it or not. They blew out all their circuits. They could care less what the truth is because it's all about power. It's not about the truth. Look at what Obama gets away with. This man has not uttered a word of truth from the day he learned how to talk and think. The day he connected the tongue to the face, he hasn't said a truthful thing, in my, in my opinion. Not one word that comes out of his mouth is truthful. And look what he gets away with. It just shows you. It just shows you the value of truth. It shows you that liars win. It also shows you that good liars win more and that great liars become politicians. I'm sorry to be so cynical, but I'm just trying to get to the truth. And so if you care to join the conversation... I, are we talking about the truth? Look, I could get philosophical here, and you'll turn the show off. I could start quoting Aristotle, Plato, Schopenhauer. I can quote some of the philosophers that I had to read in college in the first year. We read all of them.
but then you turn the show off. You'd rather hear a garbage man talk to you about the truth than a philosopher, wouldn't you? But I'm going to tell you that it's, I think the election is really about who's telling the, more, the, the truth the most. You take a guy like Rubio. We know he's a de deranged fool. Uh, let's dismiss him. Cruz is far more intelligent. You think he's telling you the truth? The wife works for Goldman Sachs, tied to Wall Street, and he's Mr. Anti-Establishment. A senator his whole political career, but he's an outsider. Uh, excuse me? The only outsider is Donald Trump. Now we're told he's not telling the truth. So it comes back to where's the truth and does it matter? At the end of the day, I don't think it matters that much. What matters is who is going to do what we need done in America to make sure we don't descend into absolute H-E-L-L. -L. So you hear a guy like Trump, he says he's going to do on my show, he says, where do you stand on torture? He says, they're going to get worse than waterboarding. You know what? I actually believe him. And I also believe that we need someone who, who would enact such policies to defeat those animals. And I wouldn't even call them animals. I love animals. I'm an animal, animal rights conservative. I wouldn't call them animals. An animal doesn't rape for pleasure. An animal does not kidnap younger animals and sell them on the auction block. ISIS does that, and no one in the U.N. seems to give a darn. Well, have you heard that come up in the campaign yet about little eight-year-old Eight-year-old girls who are not Muslim being raped by Muslim men in the Middle East. That's not a topic to talk about, to enrage and boil the blood. What, you're afraid that the president of some Hitlerian dictatorship in the Middle East, like Saudi Arabia, is going to call you a bad name? I said yesterday on this show that we can often tell more about a person by his enemies than by his friends. And when I see the president of one despotic nation after another coming out and calling Trump names... Mexican president. That's an oxymoron to say Mexican, Mexican and president in one, in two words together. That's a true oxymoron. Mexican president compares Trump to Hitler and Mussolini. He ought to look in a mirror. So where's the truth? This is Michael Savage trying to arrive at the truth with you right here on the Savage Nation. Be here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. It is the truthful Savage Nation. The great question, by the way, you know, we're asking like, uh, what is the truth? Where do we turn for truth in a, in, a, in a sea of lies? We're drowning from it. Everyone's calling the other one a liar. It means they're all liars. I'll give you an example. We're told the Iran deal would make the world safer. Now Iran threatens to walk away from the nuke deal after new missile test. They're test firing ballistic missiles, which is in a violation of the nuke deal, and they're saying, how dare you tell us to comply with the nuke deal, which we'll leave if we have to comply with the nuke deal. This is what Trump is talking about, because he knows how to negotiate. You know that Obama gave them the ability to develop a nuclear weapon and threaten Israel's existence. You know that was the whole reason. Well, that's in addition to letting his friends collect big billions of dollars in uh, Iran oil deals and whatnot. You know that. Come on. That's the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. Now, I'll give you another example. Turn to Fox News. I'm going to read a headline to you. I want to show you how they twist the truth right in front of your eyes. Now, here's a headline on Fox News run by Rupert Murdoch. American killed in Israeli day of terror. I said, what? It makes it sound like Israel's killed an American. This is Fox News now. American killed in Israeli day of terror. You have to read on to read a Palestinian knifed an American to death in Israel. Uh, is that the truth, my friends? American killed in Israeli day of terror? That is called propaganda. That is called yellow journalism, Rupert. If you think we're all dumb, I got another guest coming for you. And so I'm saying to you, where do you turn for the truth? You have to deconstruct headlines in every newspaper. You have to deconstruct every word you hear from everybody. But let me ask you a question before you turn the show off. Here's a question for you. Tell me about your own family. Do you, you trust everything everyone says to you? Where, did you, where do you get your truth from? Uh, the priest that you trusted, how'd that work out? Where do you go for the truth? Laura on line seven on WABC. You're up on the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Uh, hi, Michael. Uh, I'm calling to ask you, where do you get your truth? Because uh, as, a, as a listener of lots of different things, conservative, liberal, uh, the whole spectrum. How do you 
get your truth. That, that you know, I, I tell you something. I got nine calls up here, Laura, and I look at all of them, and I could have avoided this call because it's going to put me on the spot. But I made a decision to answer your question because it's going to force me to answer in, uh, in a truthful way and force me to come to a realization. So you're asking me, you're putting me on the spot. You're basically turning it around and saying, Michael Savage, you're asking us, where do you go for the truth? So you're asking me, where do I go for the truth, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. I will answer it as, as, as honestly as I possibly can. I don't have a book I turn to. I have no religious figure I turn to. I have no individual in my life I turn to like a guru for the truth. Many years ago, I tried to follow, I tried to do everything by the rule book. I did everything right. Went back to school, killed myself, worked three jobs. All I wanted to do was teach college. And after I got one of the, the finest PhD you could possibly get, and I'm going to say it over and over again, I was told drop dead, white men need not apply. And for years, I looked for that teaching position. But communism had already taken over in, in many guises. And one of the guises was under affirmative action, which is absolute communism. State-controlled results. It almost destroyed me. I thought I would go insane. I had two young children. I struggled to make a living. And I came to some conclusions after many years of struggling. And here's what I decided. In order to survive, I had to put survival above everything else. I had to get rid of certain, quote, friends who were keeping me down who only fed me, they only wanted me to be a weak person in their life, someone they could have fun with. I got rid of them. I had to learn to walk alone. And I had to learn not only to walk alone, but I had to learn to put survival above everything in every decision. Now, that's the beginning of my answer to you, because there's a lot more to it. Does that somewhat answer your question? It does. It's it's a little scary uh, the way you're um, the way you're phrasing it. You know that you can't depend on um, people and and things like that. It's a scary world. I'll I'll, get, I'll grant you that. I have Ara, listen to me. I'm a realist. I am a realist. What I found out is if I put my own survival ahead of every other thing in the world, things are going to work out for me. If I let others tell me what to do, I'm going to wind up in the gutter without clothing on. They throw me on the third rail, let the train run over me. That's what I found out. So, are you, are you there? Let me explain what I'm in a bigger, in a bigger uh, context, the larger context, what I'm trying to say to you. If I put my own survival above everything else, it answers a certain question. And it, let's put it in this election. Why am I for Trump? Do I know him? No. Did he promise me anything? No. Did I ask him for anything? No. Why am I banking, backing Donald Trump? Because my survival depends upon a president who is going to put the interests of America ahead of all other interests. He does that for me. The others, I don't believe, do. I don't believe does that either. I'm sorry, say that again, I missed you. I don't believe uh, the others uh, think of us either. I do agree that, you know, Trump um, is saying he's putting us America first, but... Is he just doing this as an ego trip or uh, adding another notch to his... Of course we have a gamble. We have to take a gamble. Given the background, given the stories, given the fact that he's running for office, given that he's now a politician, given all of the stories, yes. On the other hand, would we even be talking about closing the border with Mexico were it not for Donald Trump? Probably not. No, we would we'd be going on like, oh, immigrants all come here to work. We need as many as we can get. And the Syrian males of military age are just wonderful. Muslims are just like everybody else. Their religion is equal to all other religions. That's the garbage we've been fed for so many years. And we all know it's a lie. Oh, I agree. I absolutely agree. All right. So I'm telling you, if I put my survival and I look ahead for my children and grandchildren, who am I going to back, Hillary Clinton, a globalist? No, I can't back a communist, a communist manipulator of the worst order from the Democrat side. I'm sorry. Uh, so so I'm, I'm coming back to what is the truth. And I'm telling you, I base the truth on my own survival and I project it out to the world. That's basically the only answer I can give you. Okay, well, that's a good answer. I appreciate it. All right. Applause, please. I'd appreciate that. Why don't you try another talk show host one of these days and ask him where they go for the truth? I'll tell you what you'll hear. I read the Bible late at night. Yeah, right. The Bible with a playboy in the middle of it. Come on. That's a tough question to answer. Cold. I answered. I had no script. 
So there you go. Where do you turn for the truth is the question. Maybe I've made you think. Maybe you're not interested. But maybe you are interested. Maybe maybe you do want to answer this question. I think there's no fundamental, uh, no fundamentally more interesting question. We know we don't get the truth from the media. So here I am in the media. I'm on a microphone broadcasting to a lot of people on many stations. Who's this guy? I like his voice. What's he talking about? Where do you turn for your truth? You look at the headline of a newspaper, $55 million peep show. Someone I never heard of goes to a hotel, and a stalker looks at her through a wall. I don't know what he did. The hotel has to pay her $55 million. Do you know any girl on earth who's worth 50? I, I don't understand this. What, the lawyers are honest? The lawyers, then we turn to them. The law is the truth. You hear this? The law. We're going to turn to the law for the truth. How about doctors? We used to think doctors were God. Remember that? Then we found a lot of them were performing uh, procedures for the money. We couldn't believe it. So we don't know where to turn. It's like a world that's turned upside down. We don't know where to turn. So people don't know what to do. So some turn to drugs. Some turn to dogs. Some turn to cats. Some turn to birds. Some turn to reptiles. Some turn to sex. Drugs, sex, and rock and roll. They know that's the truth. It reminds me of a story I was told. Do I have time in this stop set to digress a bit? Thank you, Robert. I appreciate the dispensation of time. There's a, a great book from many years ago by Nikos Kazantzakis, a Greek writer, and he wrote Zorba the Greek and other novels. Uh, you may have seen the movie years ago with uh, Anthony Quinn. So it tells the story about a Greek engineer who goes to a remote island to build something, and he meets a, a peasant by the name of Zorba, Zorba the Greek, who's a man of the earth and played by Anthony Quinn. You can get it. So there's a famous scene where the, the, the engineer who relies on reason alone for his truth is arguing with the peasant, the man of the earth, who relies not upon reason at all. He relies upon emotion and feeling. So he asks the peasant, the strong iron man, he says, well, what do you think is the truth? How do you get at the truth? So he says, I'll tell you a story. I'll tell you a story, Mr. Engineer. You're so smart with your books. Let me tell you a story. And here's the story. He said, I was climbing the mountain over and over to get to the top of the mountain. And on the climb, I went into a village, and I met a woman who was alone. She was a widow. And he said, we got together that night. We drank a lot of wine, and we made love. And he said, in the morning, I woke up and saw God. And he said, that engineer is the truth for me. Does that answer your question? I, I don't know if that answers your question, but a lot of people believe that that does give them a degree of truth. I mean, there must be a reason for the French to name that particular could the conclusion of that act, la petite mort, the small death, maybe it brings you closer to God. I don't know. But it certainly is compelling as a thought. Some of us rely upon emotions. Some of us rely upon reason. Some of us have given up even caring what the truth is. We're glad to be able to get in the car, buy groceries, come home and lock the door. That's our truth. Well, that answers the question. There's your truth. Survival is your answer. Raw survival may be your answer. But what do you think? And the other question is, what would life be like in America after three years of a Hillary presidency? Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to The Savage Nation. The phone number is 855-400-7282. I'd like to take a caller if we can. Let's go to a caller from WMAL in Washington, D.C. on line six. Ari, you're on the program. What's on your mind? Yeah, the truth doesn't matter. The people at power, in power will do whatever they want. When a guy tells a woman they love him, that's not the truth. The truth is the genes want to replicate. It doesn't matter. I talked to Francis Collins, and I head of the NIH, as you know. I told him, you know, Michael Savage wants to be the director. He hates the NIH. You, oh, you've been speaking the truth about the NIH and a lot of corrupt organizations in this country. It doesn't matter. Whoever has the power is going to do what they want. Are you, are you in the medical research field? No, I design medical devices, but I met him at a... At a Let's just say a country club party. No, I once said, not in jest on this show, that if Trump became president, and he actually did it, say to me, Savage, why don't you leave radio and, and do something for me? I would say to him, you know what I want to do? I want to run either the NSF or the NIH. They wouldn't believe what hit them if I did that. Do you know that? You're do you know right. Kind of do you know what kind of corruption there is in the research world in America? It's a nightmare of ripping off billions of dollars from the poor taxpayer for useless research. I took a course at the NIH, and I was shocked to find out that the whole system is designed to transfer tax money to all these research companies. <laughs> well, now you know why they don't like Trump. 
And now you know why they don't want Trump to win, because they like business as usual. They want everything to be going along as usual, right? That's right. They want a polite... All right, that's all. Next case. Let's move on. As I often say, that does open up one line, and we have only one line. I have nine open lines. I mean, nine lines. Only one is open at 855-47282. You can jump in with your conversation on imagining life after three years of a Hillary presidency, or what would the country look like after those three years, or where do you turn for the truth? And when I come back, if that's not enough for you, I will give you all the news, views, and reviews right here on The Savage Nation. It is the Savage Nation. We're searching for the truth today on Talk Radio. Now, many of you think that you're going to find truth in politics. I'm quite cynical. I don't. But the worst of them, the worst of them all is Bernie Sanders. Thank God he's a non-entity. He'll get nowhere. Here is a guy whose entire career has been based upon lies and deceit and hatred. Jealous of everything on the earth that's better than him. So last night he's on Fox News with a fake town hall meeting. And again, he repeats the big lie that black people are being abused by white police officers, guaranteeing that another cop will die because of that Bernie Sanders. I want you to listen to Clip J on the Savage Nation. There is no candidate in this race who has talked more about poverty than I have. And one of the things that's disturbed me, media doesn't often cover that. We have 47 million people in this country living in poverty. That is a higher rate than any other country in the industrialized world. We have the highest rate of childhood poverty of almost any major country on earth. I talk about poverty all of the time. What I meant by that is that in African American communities, you have people who are living in desperation, often being abused by white police officers. That is a bad thing, and that has got to change. Right. And that's I want why you to I'm understand how dangerous and deadly this vermin is. This man is an evil man. This is a purely evil man. What he's doing is guaranteeing that criminals of color will be empowered to get away with their crime when they see a white cop approaching. They know the cop is going to hesitate and get killed or beaten up. There's a rule in all police work that if you hesitate, you're going to get hurt or killed. I was recently on a trip, and I spoke to some young men from South Africa. You want me to tell you what life is like in South Africa after apartheid? Would you like to hear about the apartheid that is now ongoing in South Africa against whites? Would you like to hear about the crime and the rape and the murder in South Africa? Would you like to hear about gun laws in South Africa? Would you like to hear what's coming in America unless this tragic trajectory that we are on is stopped? The tragic trajectory that we are on must be stopped or we will be living in South Africa in a very short period of time. Now, many people would love that. You say, well, I should get even. The Bernie Sanders of the world would just love that. All of the race mongers, the haters, would just love it. All of the liberal professors would just love it, wouldn't they? I'll tell you all about the gun laws in South Africa another time, because you're not going to believe it. That's what will happen if Hillary wins, my opinion. Let's go to some of the callers on the Savage Nation on what will this country look like should she win after three years. Let's go to WJR. John, line five, go ahead, please. Michael, I might be a little late on this subject, but I wanted to speak to what would the first thing... All right, look, can you make it quick, though, because I hear you're building up a little slow. Time is very short. I think the first thing she's going to do is try to go after something on hate speech, which basically would nullify the First Amendment, and that would give her complete control. Again, boom. All right, I believe... If you go down the, the amendments, Hillary will go after every one of them. And she'll say it's in the name of fairness and, and truth, that she would eliminate fairness and truth. First Amendment, gone. Second Amendment, gone. Third Amendment, gone. Search and seizure, gone. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Bye-bye, love. Bye-bye, happiness. Hello. Some turn to love for the truth. How does that work out? Last 90 days. We were talking, if you missed the opening hour, about a number of things. And the number one issue is truth. Where do you turn for the truth? Because we're living in a sea of lies. One politician calls the other a liar. Some lie more than others, but very few of them tell us the truth. If you look at the uh, origin of the word politician, and I don't happen to have a, an etymological dictionary with me, I think you'll find it comes from the Greek. And it refers to the word, not truth, but something else. Politician means someone who can bamboozle you. Tell you one thing and do what he wants. Or tell you one thing and do what she wants. Tell you one thing and do another. So we don't know which way to turn. We know they're all, you know what, full of it. They all want our vote. They all want to run the most powerful earth, the nation on earth. And we don't know which one is a bigger liar than the other. So let me begin this hour by inviting you not to call because there are no open lines on that. I want to begin with something. Here is a, a, a soundbite from Hillary Clinton denying that the, inv the intervention in Libya was her idea. Now, we all know that's a lie. Listen to clip 13. Look, it was the president's decision, and I think he listened to everybody just as he did when we were involved in the intense uh, review of intelligence as to whether or not the president should order action to go after bin Laden. Uh, these decisions are obviously, ultimately, the president's. That's one of the worst lies she's ever told in a lifetime of lying. She's denying that the intervention in Libya, which saw the overthrow of Gaddafi, was her idea. First of all, she boasted about his death, and I'll play a soundbite to prove it in a minute. The whole Middle East mess, which with the millions of refugees, she owns. The Arab Spring, she owns. This was funded by a George Soros front group. The architect of it was probably as a... a Correct me if I'm mistaken. I remember reading in great detail. It was none other than Zbigniew Brzezinski. If you, if you don't know who he is, he was Jimmy Carter's, hello, national security advisor of all people. Zbigniew Brzezinski came up with the Arab Spring. It was enacted by Hillary Clinton. When they had Gaddafi on the ropes, he begged us not to kill him. He said, if you kill me and I disappear, Libya will descend into chaos. You will have what you have in the Horn of Africa. You will have tribes taking over. You'll have tribal warlords running the country. So here's Hillary Clinton now denying that the intervention in Libya was her idea, which we know it was her idea. And listen now to a soundbite from after they caught him and killed him on the Savage Nation. We came, we saw, he died. <laughs> her in the sorority. We came, <laughs> we saw, <laughs> he died. <laughs> the girls had a wonderful time. The sorority killed him. So who do you turn to for the truth is what I'm asking you. Well, I'm trying to put the truth together for myself and for you. And this is a choice between bad and really bad, as far as I can tell. Really bad. Really bad. So where do you turn for the truth? Chris on WABC Line 6, you're up on the Savage Nation. Good day, Dr. Savage. The only place I turn to the truth, and the only possible place you can turn to the truth, is in the past, or our history. As one of your callers said earlier, I don't listen to what they say, I listen to what they do, or what they did. All right, so now let's talk about history in, in general terms, because I'm a student of history. You've got a revisionist movement ongoing in the universities for a good 20 years now, started by Foucault and other madmen of the left, who say that it's... All a lie. All of history is a lie. It's a matter of the perspective of the historian. And they're rewriting history. What do you say to that? Well, that, that's dangerous. That's very dangerous for the... Of course. Now America is no longer a great nation. It's an evil nation. The poorest American white person is now an evil slaveholder and derived all his power from slavery. You hear this? Even though people like myself who come from an immigrant grandfather who dropped dead that his son and his grandson and I could have a better life. But they're apparently evil men. My grandfather worked till he dropped dead at 47. Do you understand what we're living through now? Everything is turned upside down because of the left-wing fascism that's ongoing in the world of ideas? Right. 
but they try to cover up history. My biggest fear is that history will repeat itself, and you mentioned about poverty earlier. My biggest fear is this country turns back toward poverty. I what, what do you mean by the cut? What, 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 what do you mean by turns back to poverty? Well, when you get to socialism, everyone equal will be in poverty. All right, you're afraid that the income redistribution will not really help the poor; it'll hurt everybody. That's exactly right. Exactly. Well, I'm not a poor person anymore. I once was, but I'll tell you this. Obviously, I'm interested in holding on to what I've earned, and I'd rather give it away than have it taken away. Let me be very clear. I'd rather give it away than have the government take it away. So let's start with that. But number two, let us look at who actually pays the most taxes. It's people in the higher income levels who pay most of the taxes. Do you know that? Yes, absolutely. Or how, come, how come we don't hear that from Bernie the liar, Sanders, Mr. Sandman? Thank you for the call. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's one of the topics we're talking about. The other one is, if you just tuned in, on the Savage Nation. Imagine life after three years of a Hillary Clinton presidency. What would the country be like? What would it be like? And those are the two topics I want to stick with for a little while. Let's go to Dan on line seven, GDJ Radio. Dan, go ahead, please. Dr. Savage, yeah, it's, it's almost impossible to find, you know, the truth. I listen to you just just mainly to get another opinion <laughs> it's like they're all singing from the same hymn book from the left and people you used to you thought you could trust at one point all are even you know going more to the left i mean the churches the media the politicians they're afraid of being called racist and you know they're cowed they don't want you know it's disgusting the same right so they don't really look for the truth anymore they just want to go along with the program so they all say, yes, income inequality, yes, to white privilege, yes, there's global warming, yes, to transgender is better than uh, straight gender. Yeah, I get it. That's called insanity. That's a society melting down like a nuclear power plant called Chernobyl. Absolutely. That's why Mr. Trump is like, you know, he's saying some of the things we want to hear. He's speaking up for people like, like with the border. We're watching people flood over. In all right, let's talk about that for me. Let's say you don't like Trump and you don't trust him and you think he's a, a BS artist. Has anyone else talked about the border where it became a national issue until he brought it up? No. Will he actually build a wall? I think he will, in, in part anyway. What would America be like if he built the wall with Mexico? Would it be a better country or a worse country? According to the left-wingers, it would be a terrible nation to stop the flood of the poor coming out of Honduras, many of whom are diseased, by the way, and Nicaragua and El Salvador, let alone Mexico, would this be a worse country if we actually had secure borders with some medical sense in place? Why would it be a worse country to control our immigration in this, this country? How could that be worse? Right. I asked those on the left. And uh, the Mexican-Americans, who I assume they're, 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 they're Americans first, and the Pope, are we in other countries entitled to have a secure border or not? Let the, let the Pope... Let the Pope take a flight for all I care. He's the biggest liar on the planet, that hypocrite. That hypocrite Pope flies around on Alitalia, polluting the atmosphere, and talks about global warming. He goes to the border with Mexico and has the nerve to lecture us on we should be more tolerant and admit everyone in from Mexico. Have you seen the wall built around the Vatican? Have you looked it up? Go Google it. You'll take a look at a wall. Nothing, a tank couldn't get through it. When have they last accepted refugees in the Vatican? Of course, in the... Ah, hypocrite. He's the biblical representation of hypocrisy. What does he think, people are that stupid? Thanks for the call. KCMO. Hey, I haven't heard from you in a while. KCMO, Kansas City. Travis, go ahead, line eight. Dr. Savage, it's a pleasure. Uh, to answer your question, what I think the uh, United States would look like after uh, three years of you know, post-Hillary Clinton presidency, it would look exactly like Ayn Rand's uh, dystopian novel, Atlas Shrugged. I mean, we would have all the producers, all the innovators, all the folks out there that go out and make America happen and make it great would be uh, relegated to the ash heap while the vermin and the parasites take over and, and take over the bones. And uh, maybe if we're lucky, we have a John Galtland where, the, where there's a refuge for the like-minded folks like us that could actually make a living and, and innovate and do their own... Uh, do their own. Well, uh, it's a great novel, you know, and it was a predecessor to that novel by Aldous Huxley called Brave in the World. You know it? I do. Well, who was one of the survivors in Brave in the World? Who fled to a secret location to build a resistance against this? It was a man named Savage. Do you remember that? I do. <laughs> <laughs> the Savage Nation, the last refuge 
for people hungry for the truth. But you fear we'd have an armed rebellion after three years of Hillary. Is that your fear? She'll seize guns. You know that. Because she fears that as well. You know that as well. She is an absolute dictator. She will seize guns and make them illegal in many, any way necessary. She'll either make ammunition uh, outlawed. And you know what happens? I heard uh, from this gentleman from South Africa who has the guns, that guns are outlawed in South Africa. Take a guess who has guns in South Africa now that guns are outlawed in South Africa. The criminals have guns. Do you know that? Everything we've been saying, that if you take guns away from the law-abiding citizen, the only people left with guns are the, are the, are the criminals. Is that not commonsensical? Everybody knows that except the leftists who keep repeating the same big lie. Take away guns and there'll be less violence. Take away guns and there'll be less violence. A complete and total lie. The only thing that scares a burglar more than a burglar alarm is an armed resident. So you fear, as I do, that she's the worst of the pack. Is that what you're saying? I believe, I believe uh, well, I think Bernie's worse than Hillary, but Hillary, you know, a communist by any other name, you know, she may not be uh, out there portraying herself as a quote-unquote social, you know, democratic socialist, but she wears the same color. It's red. Right. Well, let me make a little statement on the Savage Nation, which you can mark down for this date. What is today's date? March what? I don't even know. March who are we? March what? Eighth. Okay. Listen to me on the Savage Nation. Today is the 8th of March in the year 2016. I'll make a prediction. If Hillary becomes president, financially nothing will change in the country because she's part of the Wall Street crowd. She is Wall Street. So fiscally, the country will not change very much, incidentally. Socially, a meltdown. It'll look like a bad university. It will be, look like socially a meltdown, a social nightmare. There'll be a transgender in your soup. I'll be right back. It is the Savage Nation, and I have a special treat for you today. Many of you missed the interview with Donald Trump last night on the Savage Nation. I'm going to play a piece of it at about 34 minutes after the hour, Bec not because I just want to play a Trump piece or that I want to go out for a bagel. No, it's because I asked him a very specific number of questions that received zero publicity because I am not part of the establishment conservative or a libertarian movement. I have no friends who own websites, etc. You never hear about me except on this show. But the interview did break new ground. I asked him about his position on torture and other things on the program, and I think you need to hear it if you missed it, and many of you did. So I'll play a little bit of that because I do support Trump, and I happen to resent the phonies who are trying to destroy him. They really get me sick because I have been deceived by every Republican I ever backed, whether in talk radio or by voting for them, whether it was going back to uh, Mitt Romney, Romney the, the fraud, who's suddenly back again. Like All of a sudden, The Undertaker is back. He forgot he ran and lost through the election. He was a Massachusetts liberal, Romney. He signed an individual insurance mandate into law. He wouldn't repudiate that decision. Before that, who was the great conservative? George W. Bush. And what did Bush do for us? The many talk shows went to the White House. He called them, he beckoned them, and they had lunch with them. I wasn't invited. I had written 20 best-selling books in a row, and his wife, I forget her name, Mrs. Bush, ran a literacy program. Everything was about books. She never acknowledged one book I ever wrote because they were too conservative. But George W. Bush, the man, he said it was our duty to bring democracy to the Middle East. And what, how'd that work out for us? And before that, there was the wonderful Bob Dole, a man I loved because he was a war hero who suffered so greatly from his injuries in Italy in World War II. And what did he do for us? Well, he brought us uh, the Americans with Disabilities Act. How has that worked out for us? Is it all about Americans with disabilities? If it was, I wouldn't even be talking about it. And then what did he do after he left office, Bob Dole? What did he do? He went to work for China as a lobbyist. That's all. So I don't regret supporting these people, but they're all liars. So what is a conservative today? What does it actually mean? If you actually look back, what does the word conservative mean? I remember going back into the late 60s when the word conservative came around. I resented the word. I didn't like what it meant. I didn't like the type of people who said that they're conservatives because I didn't know what they were talking about. There was a certain meanness about it that uh, left me out in the cold. I didn't like the word as it was used. I'm a conservative. What did it mean? 
What were they conserving? Which values? What exactly does that mean to be a conservative? Who is in the conservative media that you trust? Well, I told you, you go back to the hour number one on the show. How do I define the truth for myself? How do I arrive at the truth for myself? It's about my survival. That's my truth. And if I project it out to the world, I usually make the right decision. So what's the number one issue for me in my life looking forward to the next president? One issue only. Islamic terrorism, Islamic extremism, Muslim immigrants. Number one. Because if we have any more mosques, any, any more Muslim immigrants, you're not going to have an America in 20 years. I'm sorry. Take it for what it is. I've seen what it has done wherever it has metastasized. It is not like any other religion as, as it is currently practiced. Let me be very clear. This is a very sensitive issue, but I'm a student of religion, and I can tell you right now, Islam has not always, has not always been a religion of conquest. At the outset, it was a religion of conquest. That's how Muhammad and his henchmen cutthroats managed to conquer so much territory in only 25 years. It was not through love. It was not through the preaching of, of Jesus, of turning the other cheek. It was through murder, killing, kidnap, rape. Every village they went in, they decimated the people. They raped the girls. They burnt the village to the ground, and they put terror in the hearts of one village after another. That's how they conquered so much territory. Tell me that's not a, so different today from what's going on in the Middle East. Why would you want to risk that in America? I know that there are front groups for this terrorism who tell us that that's a lie, that only conservatives who are bigots, who are extremists, fear them because it is a religion of peace. My friends, the first crusade was that of Muslims against Christians. It was not what you were taught in school, that it was Christians who conducted the first crusade. Study your history or else you will be condemned to repeat it. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Let's cut right to the chase. We're all very busy people. And let me just say this right off the bat. I've been in this business 22 years this March, thank God. I have never seen such hatred directed at a single man as I see against Donald Trump. No one is perfect. I see more hatred on a daily basis coming not only from our enemies but from newspaper people in this country who say things about Trump that they wouldn't even dare say about people who murder, kidnap, rape, torture, sell young girls into slavery. The Daily News was the worst. I read it over the weekend. I've never seen anything like it. And so I want to talk about that on The Savage Nation with the man himself who's being attacked. Donald Trump, welcome to The Savage Nation. Donald, how do you take such abuse? It's amazing. I've never seen anything like it. The Daily News is owned by a lightweight named Mort Zuckerman. He's, uh, you know, just one of these guys doesn't know what the hell he's doing. The paper is going to close soon. But the Daily it, News is run by Zuckerman. I thought he had Alzheimer's disease. Well, he's got a problem. And, and uh, to be honest, I mean, I hear it's closing very soon. But, you know, what? Donald, let, let me lay, let, lay my cards on the table. From the beginning, I have supported you, and I still do. But with this relentless assault, assault on you from every quarter I can imagine, and think, from people I could never imagine saying these things, some are losing faith in you because of these assaults. I'd like to clear the air today with a few questions. The number one issue for me and for many of them is the foreign worker program or H-1B visas. On the last debate, you implied you wanted to expand this program. The next day, your campaign released a statement saying that that wasn't the case. Where do you actually stand on H-1B visas, Mr. Trump? To keep it down to a minimum, we don't want to have it. Like we right now, we're our job, you know, our job situation is a disaster. When they asked me that question, it was mixed up. It was a mixed up question and, you know, it was improperly asked. But uh, our job situation in this country is an absolute uh, disaster because, you know, the 5% rate they talk about is actually probably 25%. The real number, unemployment number, is probably 25%. We have to get jobs for our people first, and that's just not what's happening. You know that better than almost anybody. But, but Donna, listen, I, in Silicon Valley, you got guys like Facebook's founder who are hiring – He's hiring H-1B visa guys from India for 20 bucks an hour. He's firing American IT workers who are making only 55 an hour. It's astounding. I had a headhunter call me who say that's outrageous. He's only doing it for profits. There are plenty of American workers who could do the jobs. So why would you expand the H-1B visa program? This example is Disney, what they're doing. They're having people train these people, and after they're trained, they get fired. No, I know that. So I'm saying if you become president, which I hope you do, 
would you tell the American people that you're going to ban knock out the H-1B visas for a while and let Americans train for the jobs? We have to get our people working first, Michael. Before we can do anything, we have to get our people working. But, you know, Disney went out. You saw what happened with Disney. They had people training these people. After they were fully trained, the people that were doing the training were fired. No, I know that. That's why I'm asking you the question. All right, let's put that aside. During an interview on CBS, you talked about having to fight ISIS, fighting fire with fire. And I happen to agree with you, by the way, because they're not fighting by the Geneva Convention rules. Can you clarify your position on having American soldiers torture them in order to get information out of them? Where do you really stand on that? Well, that's clear. That was always clear. That was never a change. Uh, look, the question was asked to Ted Cruz, and he didn't want to get involved in it because he thought that waterboarding is so terrible. Then they looked over to me, and I said, absolutely, I want waterboarding. I absolutely want it. Now, I'm talking about within the laws, but I want to expand the laws to include waterboarding and to include worse than waterboarding because what we're doing is we're fighting people that have no rules and regulations, and we're putting all these rules and regulations on, whether it's torture or whatever you want to call it, and how are you going to compete with an enemy where they have no rules and regulations, and yet we put all these restrictions on? So I said, and I got a tremendous ovation when I said it, I said that as far as I'm concerned, waterboarding is fine, and frankly, I'd like to expand it. Now, you have laws. But they don't have laws. You know, we have laws, Michael. They don't have laws. No, I agree. It's like going into a boxing ring, and one guy's following all the rules of boxing. No low blows, no hitting behind the belt. The other guy is kicking him in the you-know-whats, giving him rabbit punches, hitting him in the neck. How can he win that fight? You guys are allowed to walk in with a machine gun. We're allowed to walk in with nice, soft uh, gloves. So that's what we're doing. All right, so you're saying take the gloves off and just kill him, and that's the end of it. Otherwise, they're liable to kill us. You know, I've said this before, Donald. I was banned from Britain for asking a rhetorical question, which was, what do you, th what would you rather do if a group of radical Muslims got their hands on a dirty bomb and you had the opportunity to kill them before they killed you? What would you do? They said, I said kill 100 million Muslims. I never said that. So I'm used to this kind of slam, Donald. Believe me, I know what they do. That's yeah, terrible. They'll take what you're saying. They'll totally change it. No, what I say is we have to widen our, you know, hey, look. The concept that we have laws and they don't, number one, is no good. Okay, it's not a good situation. But we live within the laws. We have to widen the laws so we can do things to do what we have to do. Michael, it is so ridiculous what we're doing in this country. Then you wonder why we can't beat ISIS. A new poll came out that said 61% of Americans oppose immigration. It's an astounding figure. It explains your popularity. That's why the Republican establishment is going berserk. That's why Mexico and Japan and South Korea, who are robbing us blind, have attacked you viciously. And so I, I understand why they're attacking you, because they're afraid of you. You're actually trying to make America make money. They can't have that since they're robbing us blind. The crooks don't want to stop robbing us. Now, why are the Republicans attacking you more viciously than Hillary? How come she gets off scot-free with her scandals? How come we haven't heard a thing about Obama's scandals? What kind of country am I living in, Donald? It's an amazing. I've never seen anything like what's going on, Michael, to be honest with you. I've never seen. But the polls are very good, and we seem to be doing very well. We're, you know where I am now. I'm at Mississippi right now. And tomorrow we have Mississippi, and we have also a very big one tomorrow is Michigan. Right. And there's nobody been better about cars than me. I'm going to bring the automobile industry back from Mexico to all these places that are taking our business. So I'm going to be bringing it back. So I think nobody's been better to Michigan than me. And now right. I'm, I'm, I have a huge following on WJR in Detroit, Michigan, and all the other states. Before you go, Donald, you're a businessman. People don't understand business. Socialists like Bernie Sanders, who never ran a corned beef stand, don't understand that business means some businesses succeed and some fail. So what they do, like the creeps at the Daily News, they, they come up with some of your ventures that didn't work, and they try to make it look like you're a crook or a bad businessman. What they don't understand is that business is a gamble. Some businesses work, some fail. Isn't that true? But my businesses really work. And the ones that they have these little things, number one, they're still in business. I don't even know what they mean. They talk about a water company. They talk about these different things. I still have them. Uh, but my businesses work. I never even saw the thing in the Daily News. I mean, the good news, I guess not a lot of people read the Daily News. But my businesses work. Hey, Michael, I made billions and billions and billions of dollars. I started off with very, very little, and I made billions and billions of dollars. And well, that's, that's something that guys, something that the college class of spoiled inheritance cases don't understand. Guys who say you inherited the money from your father, I happen to know from having read everything I could about you and your great father, 
was he didn't give you a lot of money. He gave you an initial seed loan, which you paid back. Your father was a great man, yet they even smeared him. Here's a man who built apartment houses all over middle-class Brooklyn and Queens, and they made him into a bad guy for doing it. So what more can you expect from these people? They've never built a thing in their life, Donald. No, they're bad people, Michael, and they're liars. They're real liars, and it's a shame. It's a shame they can get away with it. But Now, I saw something positive, Donald. Trudeau, the left-winger in, in, in Canada, said, I'll work with Trump if he wins. He's smarter than I thought. He senses you just might become president. Well, we're doing well. I mean, despite all this bad press, I have to tell you, the press is brutal. You look at what the New York Times says and all these people, and it's absolutely, and so, it's, it's such lies. They, what are, I mean, what they say is just incredible. And then when you call them to have it corrected, they agree with you, and then they say, but we're not correcting it. Yeah, oh, I've seen yes. that my whole life. Look, he, this guy Trudeau, he's very smart. He, he's saying, look, I'm not an American, I'm a Canadian. He doesn't know who's going to win, but he said, I can work with Donald Trump if he wins. So he, he smells which way the wind is blowing. And then he says about Americans who may want to move to Canada, if you become president, he's offering them Cape Breton and Nova Scotia. You know what? I'd pay one-way fares for all of the liberals on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. I'd raise all the money I could to give them one-way tickets to Cape Breton. Would you join me in that, Donald? That's funny. Well, you know, it's interesting. I built many units on the West Side, that whole city, from 72nd Street to 59th Street. They don't talk about that, by the way. They only talk about a water, or they talk about something else, which, by the way, I still have. You know, these companies that they said didn't, they're little companies. They're all little companies, but they're, most of them are doing very well. Yes, but the critics are those who never ran a business or tried business. So even if the companies aren't making money, the fact is that some win and some lose, some win big, some lose big, some win small and some lose small. That is capitalism. Last, business, we touched that. How about the health care? You seem to be leaning to more of a government-style control of health care. Would you, would you grant uh, health care to illegal aliens in this country? No, I wouldn't. And frankly, I'm not. I, what I want to do is private. I want to bring, uh, you know, we want to knock out the lines. We want to do a lot of different things, Michael, so that we can have competitive private health care. And that's going to take care of most of it. Now, you'll have some people at the very, the very bottom that just don't have money. And we go through Medicare, Medicaid. We go through some kind of a formula because we don't want people dying in the middle of the streets. But Donna, listen, I've said this and people don't understand it. It doesn't matter. If you gave them government-subsidized health care, it, it would cost us less than what it's costing us now with them having 100% care in any hospital in America. I've gone in the ER room for problems of my own in California. You see them around the clock. They come in with a sniffle the next day with a broken hand, a broken arm. They get gold-plated health care. There are no limits on what they get, Donald. We'd be better off giving them some kind of program that was limited. Do you know that? Right. What we have now is the worst, Michael. It's the worst of all, and it's it's going to die of its own volition, but we're going to terminate it. If I win, we terminate it, we replace it with really good stuff that's going to cost a lot less money. What about Social Security, Donald Trump? Try and save it, Michael. We've got to save it. We Look, these people have been paying in for years. Now, we're losing our jobs, we're losing our money, everything's leaving the country. You look at, hey, I'm in Mississippi, Mississippi now, they're complaining they're losing so many jobs. I was in Michigan a couple of days ago. They're complaining they're losing so many jobs to Mexico and to other places. We're going to bring back our jobs. We're going to make our country rich again, and we're going to be able to save Social Security. Donald, before you go, I just want to repeat what I said here for two hours. Because of the vicious attacks upon you, you a man is more often, a man is more clearly defined by his enemies than by his friends. And by that definition, you're in great company. Some of the sickest most radical left-wing vermin in this country and abroad are ripping you to shreds. You know what? God bless you, because I don't like them very much. Right, I understand. I understand. It's very... All right, Donald, I wish you luck tomorrow in Michigan, Mississippi, Idaho, and Hawaii, and I hope you can come back to the Savage Nation, and you don't forget me when you become president. I will never forget you, Michael. You've been my friend, and I appreciate it. You've been so loyal and so great, and I appreciate it, Michael. Well, I hope you didn't mind some of the tough questions because people have been saying you got to ask them this. No, and thank you. I love those questions. I mean, <laughs> and I knew that you would, and I also knew that you wouldn't be afraid to answer them because you're telling the truth. Okay, that's the thing that they hate the most, Donald. I know you're really afraid of Mitt Romney. Tell us about that wimp. Where's that coming from? The guy is the worst category in the history of presidential politics. He came out of nowhere. I mean, he just came out of nowhere. This guy disappeared. He disappeared. He didn't want to be. He had some bomb. Maybe. Thank you.
Right, if but he would, if he used the, one tenth of the viciousness against you, against Obama, he would have destroyed him in those three debates. He took a fall for the Republican Party because he beat him in the first debate, and then they told him to take a fall in number two and three, and the rest is history. Donald Trump, I won't keep you any longer. Thank you for being on the Savage Nation. I'll be right back, everybody. I ran all the way. Savage Nation, 54 minutes after the hour. My God, I, I can't believe two hours have shot by like this. I'm in Florida, WFTL Studios. Home studio blew out again, thanks to Comcast. Thank you very much. Great service. Terrific company. Nothing but the finest. But I'm glad to be here. Wonderful people. We're talking about where do you turn for the truth? Imagine life after three years of a Hillary presidency. What would the country look like? Line one, Joe, KSFO, fire away. Hi, Mike. Um, love your show, buddy. Um, hey, I'm feeling under the weather, so you got to forgive me. Um, I uh, I think what you were saying, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, is you were saying about survival. I kind of feel like you're basically saying you live with that fear of, of not having anything, and that's what keeps you going ultimately. And I think that's kind of what, what's so scary about what we're facing with these this religion, is that they're willing to die, and, and we're not. And, and they believe in something, and a lot of us don't. So I think it's more fear that's driving you than, than it is survival. Well, I don't fear them because we still have the most powerful military in the world. We have the weakest leadership in the history of the U.S. military, a man who uses his power to threaten the American people rather than to threaten ISIS, which is actually his creation, incidentally, which I've said over and over and over again. The reason this band of renegades largely leftovers from Saddam Hussein's Republican Guard and ragtag haters of the Islamic faith from around the world, but never forget who rules them. Their leadership is all from the old Republican Guard. They could be eliminated in less than a week if he joined forces, for example, with Putin to destroy them. But have you noticed he hasn't? Right. I, fear Obama that, I fear Obama more than I do ISIS, and I will tell you why. I know who ISIS is, and most Americans know who ISIS is. Obama is so guarded in his deceit that people don't know who Obama is. Look at the hatred being directed at Donald Trump by the phony Republicans. Look at the hatred being directed at him and not at ISIS. Look how they broadcast things about him, true, untrue, but not one word about the horrors they are committing on a daily basis. That is what I fear, my friend. Right, Mike, and I, and I get that, and, and I think I miss, sometimes I speak, I'm, I'm not perfectly clear on how I say, and I get that, but I'm saying as far as survival and living, like you were saying in a lot of your shows, a lot of these spoiled brats um, that, are, that grow up, they, they don't fear anything, and that's, why they, that's what caused them to do all these things. They don't care. I mean, uh, they, What you're saying is because we have a generation that has grown up without any fear, they don't even know what the real world is. Is that what you're suggesting? Uh, absolutely, Mike. I'm a product of that. I mean, unfortunately, my life's been... Very you, mean, you mean kids who were raised on Adderall, Ritalin, marijuana, ecstasy. In other words, they're drugged. They're told that they're wonderful. They can't hit a ball, but they're told they're athletes. They're dummies in school. They're told they're Einstein. Is that what you're talking about? So they don't know up from down, left from right, east from west, truth from falsehood. That's it, That's it in an essence, Joe. Thanks for being a great listener of the Savage Nation. Back for another big hour. Be here or be nowhere. I'm Michael Savage. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Jean Jean lives on his back. Jean Jean loves him his back. His outrage has the screams and he falls. It is The Savage Nation, hour number three. Thanks for staying with me. 
You know, truth is stranger than fiction. But how many years have I told you that it's a one-party system with two-card Monty? How long have I told you it's either the Democrats or Republicans? It doesn't matter. I've told it to you since I began in radio in 1994. I've always been an independent. I've always known it's a lie. I used the word oligarchy long before it became a popular word. I certainly didn't coin the phrase. If I tell you this story that I'm about to tell you, you'll say you were right all along. Came out today in a publication called The Wrap, covering Hollywood. Headline, GOP and tech leaders hold secret meeting to stop Trump. You say, what? Those buccaneers of Silicon Valley, the worst people on the planet, in my opinion, no matter how many billions they have, they want to kill as many American working jobs as they can for another profit. So who met over the weekend in a hidden location at a private island resort over the weekend? Are you ready for this? All of the Silicon Valley liberals, including Apple CEO Tim Cook, the very same prize of a human being who will not permit the FBI to access the phone of a Muslim terrorist who slaughtered, who slaughtered many people. Wonderful man, Tim Cook. Larry Page, billionaire Facebook investor Sean Parker. Tesla Motor CEO L Elon Musk, they all met over the weekend to talk about stopping Donald Trump. They hate Donald Trump. Now, why do they hate Donald Trump so much? We know they're liberals. Why would turncoats like Bill Kristol, a loser like him, write about it with such glee? It's an off-the-record meeting. It happened as part of the neoconservative American Enterprise Institute's annual World Forum a very secret summit on a private island resort off the coast of Georgia. But who else was there? Are you ready? Other attendees included Republican strategist Karl Rove. How many years have I told you Karl Rove is a despicable human being? He was called Bush's brain. What else do you need to know? Who else was there? Are you ready for this? Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, the man I affectionately call the turkey gobbler, because he has the gullet, the backstabbing Mitch McConnell was there. New York Times loser publisher Arthur Sulzberger Jr. And here's a shocker. Our Kansas Senator Tom Cotton. I cannot believe this. Tom Cotton's a war hero. I've always admired him. Put him in the uh, list of no thank you anymore. But the highlight of the meeting, according to this article, was Carl Rove, who listened to this. I've always distrusted that swine. I've said for years that if I were running, a, if I were a director, and I were casting for a World War II movie, and I needed to cast an SA, excuse me, an SS behind the scenes officer. Rove would look real good in one of those uniforms. Rove, the portulant little pig like Rove, presented focus group findings about Trump, which indicated that the front runner's biggest weakness is that voters have difficulty envisioning him as presidential or a role model for children. Are they crazy? If that's all they can come up with, he has nothing to worry about, by the way. But the big question is, why would Alf, Apple, Alphabet, Facebook, Tesla, and the New York Times get together with sellout, sellouts like Rove and McConnell and Cotton? What are they so afraid of about Donald Trump? Why are they trying to steal the choice of the people on the conservative side? Why are they trying to deny the choice of the people who have moved over? Even from, You've got blue-collar Democrats who are going for him. You've got Democrats who are saying, I'd rather take a chance with him. Not everyone loves him. And as I've said to you before, and I'll say it again, you don't have to like Donald Trump to vote for him, and you don't have to hate Hillary Clinton to not vote for her. To me, it's all about their policies. Now, with Trump, we don't actually know what he will do. He tells us what he will do. With Hillary, we know what she will do, because she did it before. She is a disaster. She caused the refugee crisis in Europe that is threatening to sink the entire European Union to destroy it. What else has she done? Well, look into her real history. My friends, this is what it's all about. The grand old party. It's not the grand old party. It's the grand new party. That's the new nickname. So you have a list here. Carl Rove, sellout. Bill Crystal, sellout. Mitch McConnell, sellout. Apple, sellout. Facebook, greedy. Google, communist, greedy pigs. Who else was not on the list? Where was Christy Todd Whitman? Where was Mitt Romney? My friends, now you know why Donald Trump is so popular is because they all hate him. So we go back. That's a little news story for you on the Savage Nation. We have uh, breaking news as it occurs. 
Uh, we got Rubio, Schmubio. Rubio's finished. He'll be gone within a few, I would say, weeks, right? Uh, you're going to have Cruz and Trump, and I hope that they work together, frankly. Trump leads in Michigan, by the way, ahead of the primary. That's happening right now. The results will come in early this evening. You got primaries coming in tonight that are very important. Unless Trump has a big win here, it's not going to look too good for those of you who support him. You've got Michigan, you've got Hawaii, you've got Mississippi, and I believe Idaho. So it's a big deal, big political day. So we go back to these news stories on the Savage Nation in this third hour. And I go to the callers on two topics. What will the country be like after three years of a Hillary presidency? And philosophically, where do you turn for the truth in this world of lies? I think they're great questions. And I've kept, they've kept the, uh, the caller board live and hot from the minute I started this show. So let us begin on WABC line two. John, go ahead, please. What's your topic? Uh, John King. Yeah. Yeah. How are you doing, Mike? Um, basically, uh, I don't know what it is, uh, what's wrong with everybody. I think their desire for the truth is, is not there because all you have to do to see the truth is, is want to. Open your eyes, look at history, look at your own history. Like the other, your other guest talked about uh, listening to... Um, you know, other people's history. That's not valid. It's not empirical. You have to listen to your own history, evaluate it, common sense, make your own decisions. I mean, you know, you and I think the same thing, and I think a lot of this comes from the same place, and it's not from you. It's not from me. It's from looking outside. And uh, everything you're saying now, it could be cruel, it could be not cruel, but it is true. As well, what have I said that's cruel? Tell me what I have said today that is cruel on this radio show. People would, some people would think it's cruel. Uh, some people, would, you know, would say that, you know, the... Uh, just the different positions on, on, on the border security and this and that. I don't think it's cruel. I think it's common sense. You know, if, if you're having... Now, what is cruel about controlling your borders? What is cruel about protecting American jobs? What is cruel about making certain that we don't have diseased refugees coming into the country? I know I just published a book called Diseases Without Borders. I have not even promoted it. It's an e-book. It's already number one as an e-book. How did that happen? People know that Zika is coming in. They know diseases are coming in from... Guatemala, El Salvador, Nicaragua, and Mexico. They're not stupid. They have survival. They know that when you let people come in unscreened, you're going to get diseased people. You're going to get criminals. You're going to get murderers. What do you think is going to happen when you lose border controls? Well, that's what happens when you have, uh, when you have uh, criminals running the country. I mean, it's basically... No, oh, now you're talking. Now you're talking criminals running the country. Yeah, they have Criminals good... running the country. The Obama crime machine. The Obama crime wave. How come there's been no discussion about the Obama criminal machine? The Obama crime wave. The disaster of this presidency. The destruction of our way of life. The assault upon the middle class. The hatred for a particular, let us say, demographic. Let's keep it in a generic phrase. His hatred for a certain demographic. How does he get away with it? Yeah. I yeah. All right. Well, you get the picture. You got the picture. Thanks for calling. That was John on WABC that opens up one line at 855-407-282. Let's go to the next caller on the Hillary question. WF, go ahead, please. You're on the radio. Yeah. Not there. Okay, go ahead. Fire away. Yes, um, I don't think that we will have a country with three years of Hillary in the White House. I think uh, we're on the verge of Marxism right now, and I believe she'd topple us right over into it. And you know what? Well, you're a man of few words, but you said what I think is true. The woman, if you look at what she has done, what her instincts are, what universities have become, the radical, screeching, fascistic feminists who have destroyed our universities, our citadels of truth, they will destroy this country. Thank you for the call. I mean, certain things don't need to be elaborated. What more do you have to say? What, is she going to change her spots all of a sudden? The limber leopard, you don't know who she is? Trump tells Savage ISIS to get worse than waterboarding. American killed as Palestinian attack hits three cities as Biden begins a visit and talks. Mexican president compares Trump to Hitler and Mussolini. Who do you compare him to is the question. Here's a little uh, non-political statement. A, a new milestone has been hit. Online radio is a weekly habit for Americans. It's a huge news story in the industry that I think is worth talking about. 
a new research company has come out with a webinar, and it said that streaming radio is growing so fast that half of Americans 12 years and older listened to online radio in the past week. That percentage is up from 44% last year. So it leapt to 50% weekly listening. I don't know what they're listening to. It could be sports. It could be entertainment. It could be music. It could be talk. But the fact is, is that a lot of people are listening to radio now, uh, including radio on, on, the, on the Internet. 855-400-7282. This is the Savage Nation. I'll give you all the, uh, the news that's uh, out there. And, of course, if we get some early uh, indicators of what's coming out in the primaries, you'll have them as well. It is now 17 minutes after the hour. I'm Michael Savage. I'll be right back. So let's dance. Let's dance. Let's dance. Now let's dance with some ideas here. Knock off the music. Listen to me. The very same pirates of Silicon Valley who are throwing people in the gutter and replacing them with cheap workers from India, the very same pirates who are trying to throw Trump into the gutter and replace him with an establishment, an establishment puppet, are also refusing to cooperate with the FBI and permitting them to open up a cell phone's encrypted data of the Muslims who committed a slaughter in San Bernardino. So listen to what's happening. It's an interesting story. It's a very big one. Liberal France has cleared a bill that could force Apple to unlock terror data. Very interesting where it's coming from, isn't it? From Not from a right-wing com- country. It's a socialist left-wing country. French lawmakers backed the plan today to impose penalties, including jail time, on tech executives. Tim Cook, I pray to God that, uh, well, I just pray to God you, you do the right thing, Tim. You're not above the law. You're not God. You think you're God. You think you're bigger than the president. You think you're bigger than America. You think that you know what's best for America. You're wrong. They will throw them in jail if they deny access to encrypted data during a terrorist investigation, which will allow security services and prosecutors the power to force companies such as Apple Inc. to cooperate. This is in France. This is in France. Guess why it's in France? Do you know why? Do you remember what happened November 13th in, in Paris when Muslims went on a machine gun rampage and killed 130 innocent young people in a dance hall, machined them like fish in a barrel? Are you ready for this one? The lawyers of France will not permit the anti-terror investigators in France to open up the phones, the encrypted data on the phones in France. Can you believe this? Of the people who committed the murders, the slaughter. Can you believe this? Can you believe we're living in such a world that left-wing fanatics use the excuse of privacy to permit terrorists of this nature to get away with virtual slaughter? In France, phones with encrypted data are holding up investigators working in several terrorism cases, including the November 13th attacks in Paris, where so many were executed by the Muslims with machine guns who were practicing the religion of peace. Tech giants from Microsoft Corp. to Google have set aside rivalries to back the maker of the iPhone, while the U.N. on Friday said U.S. courts risk hurting human rights. Law enforcement groups seeking to join the case said their ability to extract data from the equipment they seize is critical to solving crimes and protecting the public. Well, you know, justice moves very slowly. But the dead, of course, are dead. They're never coming back. And look who's impeding the investigation. Now, let me ask you a question, all you good liberals and you libertarians. You're on the side of Apple. You say, you know, we don't want the encryption penetrated for any reason. First of all, I've shown you it can be done specific to the individual phone. It's not a key that opens up every phone's encryption. It will only only open up that phone. It's a key only for that lock. So why is Tim Cook, why is Microsoft, some of the greediest people on the planet, why are they doing this? It has nothing whatsoever to do with privacy. It has to do with protecting patents and protecting their product. They're putting their greed just as they are, they're greed ahead of our safety. Just as they are in trying to get rid of Donald Trump. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Now, I want you to imagine something. What are we talking about here? Let's, let's break it down. 
Two Muslims go on a rampage in, in uh, San Bernardino. They execute 13. They wound 30, 60. I don't know how many. They find a cell phone from one of them months ago now. And they're dying. The FBI is dying to break open the phone to find out who he called in those minutes after the slaughter. Wouldn't you like to know who they are? Who were, they, who were his buddies? Who was he calling? Who was he calling? Muhammad X. Who was Muhammad X calling who committed that massacre? I don't know. You don't know. The FBI would like to know. Why would the FBI like to know? I can guarantee you whoever they were calling has left America. But I fear something else. I fear that Muhammad was not just calling fellow terrorists. I fear that there were calls to governmental people in our government. And the government has leaned on Microsoft and Apple to make sure we never find out who they were calling. Why do I fear that? Because I'm a man of common sense and I use inductive, law, in, inductive reasoning. There's no other explanation for why Tim Cook is doing this. Somebody in the Obama administration called the tech giants and said to them, under no circumstance are you to release that data to the FBI. And then Tim Cook hired a PR agent who said, paint it as a privacy issue. And many of you gullible people bought the privacy lie. That's not the reason whatsoever. That is my opinion. It is only one man's opinion. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. We're talking about truth. Why? Take a look at what's going on in the whole process now. One calls the other a liar. So who's the bigger liar and who's telling the truth? I don't know. We're taking a gamble. Then you got on the other side, I mean, Hillary Clinton's running on a truth campaign? We didn't have eight years of her and Bill running America off the rails. And then we got the communist uh, from the soapboxes of Union Square, Bernie Sanders reinventing himself. Oh, but I'm a, I'm a Democrat socialist. Now suddenly he's Jewish. And for the first three months he says, I'm a non-practicing Jew. I don't know what a non-practicing Jew is. If God made you Jewish, you're a Jew. What do you mean non-practicing? Now all of a sudden he discovers he's not only a, not a non-practicing Jew, he's a real Jew because he realized in the campaign he needs to be a real religious person. It's unbelievable. So we, we look around, who do we believe? Where do you turn for the truth, ladies and gentlemen? And does the truth matter? Aha, there's the rub. Does it really matter what the truth is? You look back on the 60s generation, the whole hippie generation, and they wanted to blow their minds with every drug known and unknown. Every designer drug that came along, people took. And those people are running the world today, whether you know it or not. They blew out all their circuits. They could care less what the truth is, because it's all about power. It's not about the truth. Look at what Obama gets away with. This man has not uttered a word of truth from the day he learned how to talk and think. The day he connected the tongue to the face, he hasn't said a truthful thing, in my, in my opinion. Not one word that comes out of his mouth is truthful. And look what he gets away with. It just shows you. It just shows you the value of truth. It shows you that liars win. It also shows you that good liars win more and that great liars become politicians. I'm sorry to be so cynical, but I'm just trying to get to the truth. Look, I can get philosophical here and you'll turn the show off. I can start quoting Aristotle, Plato, Schopenhauer. I can quote some of the philosophers that I had to read in college in the first year. We read all of them. But then you turn the show off. You'd rather hear a garbage man talk to you about the truth than a philosopher, wouldn't you? But I'm going to tell you that it's, I think the election is really about who's telling the truth the most. You take a guy like Rubio. We know he's a de deranged fool. Uh, let's dismiss him. Cruz is far more intelligent. You think he's telling you the truth? The wife works for Goldman Sachs, tied to Wall Street, and he's Mr. Anti-Establishment. A senator his whole political career, but he's an outsider. Uh, excuse me? The only outsider is Donald Trump. Now we're told he's not telling the truth. So it comes back to where's the truth and does it matter? At the end of the day, I don't think it matters that much. What matters is who is going to do what we need done in America to make sure we don't descend into absolute H-E-L-L. -L. So you hear a guy like Trump, he says he's going to do on my show. He says, where do you stand on torture? He says, they're going to get worse than waterboarding. You know what? I actually believe him. And I also believe that we need someone who, who wouldn't act such policies to defeat those animals. And I wouldn't even call them animals. I love animals. I'm an animal, animal rights conservative. I wouldn't call them animals. 
An animal doesn't rape for pleasure. An animal does not kidnap younger animals and sell them on the auction block. ISIS does that, and no one in the U.N. seems to give a darn. Well, have you heard that come up in the campaign yet about little eight-year-old eight year old girls who are not Muslim being raped by Muslim men in the Middle East? That's not a topic to talk about? To enrage and boil the blood? What, you're afraid that the president of some Hitlerian dictatorship in the Middle East like Saudi Arabia is going to call you a bad name? I said yesterday on this show that we can often tell more about a person by his enemies than by his friends. And when I see the president of one despotic nation after another coming out and calling Trump names, Mexican president, that's an oxymoron. To say Mexican, Mexican and president in, one, in two words together, that's a true oxymoron. Mexican president compares Trump to Hitler and Mussolini. He ought to look in a mirror. So where's the truth? Donald Trump was on my show last night. And he said on this show that ISIS is going to get worse than waterboarding when I brought it up. Well, boy, did that set off a shock. Mexican president compared Trump to Hitler and Mussolini. Look who's talking. CNN's, uh, to me, he's like a Matahari, like a double agent, Zachariah with the crazy eyes. You know Zachariah on CNN? Does anyone know him? Raise your hand. With the bug eyes. The resident uh, front man for uh, care, it looks like to me, in my opinion. Well, anyway, the bug eye on CNN, Zachariah, likens Trump's rise in the GOP to the rise of Islamic extremism. Well, what I say is, you know, I've studied homeopathy. Like cures like, Mr. Zachariah. And the only way we're going to defeat your friends in uh, that world of Islamic extremism, if they are your friends, in fact, that I wouldn't know, the only way to defeat them is like cures like. We need an extremist to defeat them or we're dead. We are dead in the water unless we defeat them. And let me tell you something. There's only one thing those vermin understand, and that's worse behavior than their own, which kind of leads me to a couple of questions. Can you imagine life? Let's say it's Trump versus Hillary, which is what it's starting to look like. And let's say they don't stop him, the Romneys and the other country club Republicans who hate outsiders, who despise independence. Let's say they can't stop him and he becomes the nominee. And let's say it's him versus Hillary. And let's say she wins because she, whatever she wins, just to say she wins. Let's not go through it. Despite the email scandal, the Clinton Crime Foundation, despite the history that she has in the White House, despite all that because of the idiocy of the American people, and she wins. Would you imagine with me for a minute, three years after a Hillary presidency, what this country would be like? What would, would this country look like after three years of a Hillary presidency? You have to imagine the world after three years. And I think you have to turn to a university today to understand what's liable to happen. The, the fascism, the unconstitutional fascism on colleges today is what America itself will look like if she wins, in my opinion. Well, she's certainly better than Bernie Sanders, the communist. We understand that. But if you look at what's going on in the universities today, that's what America would look like. But there's a bigger topic other than the political itself, and that is the issue of truth. Uh, I was speaking with some people before the show today about truth. And so where do people turn for the truth today? You ask a politician a question, you don't get an answer. You get a, a, a waffle, right? So I said, well, don't turn to politicians for the truth. They're only politicians. What can you expect from them? So who do you turn to? Oh, your priest? You're going to turn to your priest for the truth? Tell me about the church today. Tell me about the synagogue today. Who do you turn to for truth? People don't know who to turn to for the truth. So I will ask you, my audience, who do you turn to for the truth? Where do you go for the truth? Now, many of you listen to talk radio because you think you're hearing the truth, and you are. I know in my own case. I tell you what I think is happening. I try to express certain things in my personal life. But honestly, you can't expect that we're gods. None of us are gods. We're all people. We're, we're all flawed. You know that. We're not better than the average person. We're just talk show hosts. It's like the old statement of the rich are different than you and I. They have money. Well, talk show hosts are different than you and I. They just have a microphone. But we're just people is what I'm saying to you. But in an age of such chaos and confusion and lies flying around, 
Where do you, the audience, turn for truth? Many of you are jaded, you're cynical, you're depressed, you don't know where to turn. You don't know what to believe. Everything is a lie. Look at Fox News. Look what they've, look what they've turned into. Last night, they do a softball town I love the word town hall. Don't you love town hall? 18 stooges that they pick. They handpick six schmendricks and a moron to sit in the audience. And they have a town hall meeting with Brett Bear, who I used to respect, by the way. I have no respect for him anymore. He's become a water boy for whoever runs the network. So they have a softball town hall meeting last night between Hillary Clinton and the communist Sanders, who practically foamed on himself with the, the amount of whatever. And not one question was really a challenge to either of them. Instead, everything was a softball aimed at Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. This is the same network where they use the vicious and Megyn Kelly, the roller derby queen, whose face is changing before our eyes, the portrait of Doriana Kelly. Uh, on a daily basis. Where do you go for the truth? I'm serious about this question. It reminds me of a story I've told many times on the show. I grew up in an immigrant household. My father was an immigrant, but he was very interested in, in current affairs. He used to get, I remember, five, six newspapers a night. And I once said to him, Dad, you've got the New York Post, the New York Daily News, the Journal American, the this, the that. I said, what do you need all these newspapers for? He said, I like to read all different sides so I can make up my own mind. Remember what I, I you know, I said, Talk radio for the thinking person because people do like to think for themselves. And there's only so much BS they can take from television where they really don't feel they're getting the, the on it. All right, look, people listen to talk radio and they watch television and they read a newspaper and they talk to their friends. And then they think, uh, 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 you know, come up to the, uh, to the truth and the, uh, arrive at the truth. The, the whole concept of truth is an interesting question itself because it's being challenged by the leftists in America right now. They are saying through the deconstructionist theory, which was written by Foucault and others, I don't need to go into the philosophy of it, that there is no truth, that everything is relative. That, that's why they want to rewrite history. They want to tell you that you have white privilege if you're white. That's even if you're born poor, dirt poor, no advantages in life. Your parents could have been destitute. They'll tell you you had white privilege just because you weren't uh, of another race. Now, you know that's a lie. But this is the kind of garbage that we're going to have to be putting up with if Hillary wins, in my opinion, which leads us back to another question. What will the country be like in three years if Hillary wins? Yesterday, I tried the story about Scalia. Was he murdered? With the evidence put out, nothing, not a call on it. All we got was Trump. So no matter what I try, I'm going to ask you again about truth because it's all about truth. What is the truth? Where do we turn for truth in a, in, a, in, a, in a sea of lies? We're drowning from it. Everyone's calling the other one a liar. It means they're all liars. I'll give you an example. We're told the Iran deal would make the world safer. Now Iran threatens to walk away from the nuke deal after new missile test. They're test firing ballistic missiles, which is in a violation of the nuke deal, and they're saying, how dare you tell us to comply with the nuke deal, which we'll leave if we have to comply with the nuke deal. This is what Trump is talking about, because he knows how to negotiate. You know that Obama gave them the ability to develop a nuclear weapon and threaten Israel's existence. You know that was the whole reason. Well, that's in addition to letting his friends collect big billions of dollars in Iran oil deals and whatnot. You know that. Come on. That's the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. Now, I'll give you another example. Turn to Fox News. I'm going to read a headline. I want to show you how they twist the truth. Right in front of your eyes. Now, here's a headline on Fox News run by Rupert Murdoch. American killed in Israeli day of terror. I said, what? Makes it sound like Israel's killed an American. This is Fox News now. American killed in Israeli day of terror. You have to read on to read a Palestinian knifed an American to death in Israel. Uh, is that the truth, my friends? American killed in Israeli day of terror? That is called propaganda. That is called yellow journalism, Rupert. If you think we're all dumb, I got another guest coming for you. And so I'm saying to you, where do you turn for the truth? You have to deconstruct headlines in every newspaper. You have to deconstruct every word you hear from everybody. But let me ask you a question before you turn the show off. Here's a question for you. Tell me about your own family. Do you, you trust everything everyone says to you? Where do you get your truth from? Uh, the priest that you trusted, how'd that work out? Where do you go for the truth? I'll be right back.
Hello, this is Mitt Romney, and I'm calling on behalf of Marco Rubio for president. I believe these are critical times that demand a serious, thoughtful commander-in-chief. If we Republicans were to choose Donald Trump as our nominee, I believe that the prospects for a safe and prosperous future would be greatly diminished. And I'm convinced Donald Trump would lose to Hillary Clinton. Look who's talking. Now, I just played for you the biggest stooge in the history of the Republican Party, maybe in American political history. Romney records a robocall for Rubio, telling us that Rubio would be a great commander-in-chief. Can you believe this? And by the way, what's eerie about it, ladies and gentlemen of the Savage Nation, his voice sounded like George Bush. For a minute, I thought I was listening to Bush back from wherever he is. No, it was, they're all the same, these country club, club Republicans. They ad adapt the same clothing, check pants, the same hobbies, golf, uh, the same drink, probably Manhattans. I don't know what they drink these days. That's if they drink at all. God only knows. Now we have another wonderful soundbite for you with the concluding moments of the Savage Nation. It wouldn't be a great day unless I could play something about Bernie Sanders. So after talking about black poverty and black people being abused by white police officers, all of a sudden he discovers that there's another race in America who may be poor. And Clip K, listen to this. I know about white poverty. It exists in my state. It exists all over this country. In the richest country in the history of the world, we have more income and wealth inequality than any other major country. We have too many people living in poverty. We have got to change our national priorities. We have got to deal with that issue. Great. Sounds good, doesn't it? Everyone wants the poor to be helped, but who's going to, where's the money coming from? Where is it coming from, Sanders? The man never created a, and I, he never created a souvlaki stand. You know, you look around America, a lot of immigrants work very hard. You see people come over, they'll open a stand, a hot dog stand, they'll work their back. They'll break their back to make a start in America. Not Bernie Sanders. He doesn't know the first thing about business, nothing. He doesn't know it requires saving money, taking a chance with that money to buy the hot dogs, to buy the stand, to pay for the electricity, to pay for the permit. He doesn't know anything about that. He doesn't know that the hot dog guy has to take a chance to buy the hot dog, to stand, the electricity, and to pay for the permit. He doesn't know that if the hot dog stand takes off, and the guy has to save his money, preserve some of it to buy the second hot dog stand, the second one on wheels. That's how immigrants build a, a life for themselves in this country. These communists have the same story, poor versus the rich, as though everybody who has money stole it from somebody else. This is the savage nation. And then you have uh, on the same side of the aisle, the commie side of the aisle, the Democrats. Here she is again, Clinton last night trying to explain why Sanders, the communist, is outperforming her with young idiots who know nothing. But I don't even have time to play that. Oh, by the way, your fair-minded president, the magical man in the White House, he has snubbed Nancy Reagan's funeral to go to a hipster festival south by southwest. He is going to spit on Nancy Reagan's coffin by going to a movie, music, and technology festival in Austin. Thank you, President Obama. You have brought real class to the White House. This is Michael Savage thanking you for listening and thanking the folks at WFTL in Florida. Savage.